റെക്കോർഡിംഗ് നിങ്ങൾ ഉടനെ കാണുന്നതായിരിക്കും അത് ലാർജ്ലി ഞാൻ ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലാണ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ളത് അപ്പൊ സോ ഐ തോട്ട് ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് ഗിവ് യു ആൻ ഇൻട്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ആദ്യത്തെ ഭാഗത്തിന്റെ ഒരു കണ്ടിന്യൂവേഷൻ ആയിട്ട് നമ്മൾ പാർട്ട് വണ്ണിൽ വി ഡിസ്കസ് ദ കോണ്ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ഇൻ വിച്ച് ദാറ്റ് സ്പീച്ച് വാസ് മെയ്ഡ് നൊബേൽ പ്രൈസ് റിസീവിങ് സമയത്ത് ഡെലിവർ ചെയ്ത ഒരു സ്പീച്ച് ആണ് ബട്ട് ഹൗ എവർ ഹി ഡെലിവേർഡ് ഇറ്റ് വൈൽ ഹി വാസ് ഇൻ ദ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ and avadnu uh, or recording aichidayirunnu he made use of this occasion logam muluven sradhikkunna or occasion aayidukondum ee speech ennum or orma peduthunna orma it it would be recorded it would be uh, you know nobel committee da avare website um avare ella public or speech na sthanam undagum adukonde he made use of that occasion to make a very powerful speech a very relevant speech aa kalagathe 2005 il aanu ee speech uh, deliver cheyathu when he won the nobel prize for literature and what was very uh, significant at that time in world politics adine kurichana deham samsarikkunnathu it was immediately after the us attack on iraq irakinna mele bomb cheriyna aa oru kalakattathil aayirunnu adu kazhinja odane aayirunnu he speech adu gorunda he makes a direct reference to that i am so truth in the our vishayam vechittan ibada thodangiyathu he talked about the difference between truth artile truth ennu parnal it is a very elusive thing there is no one truth adile adu adinde oru endana aesthetic experience inde bhagamana the way in which the artist deals with truth pakshe sherikkulla logathil angane alla nammalku satyam endanu ennu ariyanam appulana aa context le he said how people have been using lies in order to maintain power appo america polulla oru rajyam ee logathil super power ay nila nilkunnathu thenne ee oru asathyathinte perilana they make people believe that whatever they do is good noble adu loga nanmakkayitte avaru cheyana nanu avaru parnja ഫലിപ്പിക്കാണ് അപ്പം ഇറാഖ് പോലെയുള്ള ഒരു കൺട്രിയിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നിക്കരാഗുവ പോലെയുള്ള ഒരു കൺട്രിയിൽ അവരുടെ പ്രസൻസ് വളരെ സ്ട്രോങ് ആയിട്ട് അവരെ എക്സേർട്ട് ചെയ്യാണ് അവർക്ക് അവരുടേതായ ഉദ്ദേശങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഇതൊക്കെ ചെയ്യാൻ പക്ഷെ എല്ലാവരും അവര് പറഞ്ഞ് ധരിപ്പിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് ഇത് ലോക നന്മയ്ക്ക് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് ഇപ്പൊ നിക്കരാഗുവയെ കുറിച്ച് അത്യാവശ്യം നമ്മൾ കഴിഞ്ഞ ക്ലാസ്സിൽ പറഞ്ഞു വേർ ഒരു സെഹോൾ സെഞ്ചുറിയോളം അമേരിക്ക നിക്കരാഗുവയിൽ ശരിക്കും അവരുടെ ഇന്റേർണൽ അഫയേഴ്സിൽ വളരെയധികം ഇന്റർഫിയർ ചെയ്തു അതാണ് അമേരിക്കയുടെ ഒരു പ്രത്യേകത അവർ നേരിട്ട് പോയി ഇടപെടുകയില്ല അവര് വളരെ സൂത്രത്തിൽ അവിടെ ആ രാജ്യത്തിന്റെ ഇടയിൽ പോയിട്ട് അവരുടെ എന്താ എഫേഴ്സിന്റെ ഇടയിൽ പോയിട്ട് ദ വിൽ ജസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രോ ലൈക്ക് എ കാൻസറസ് ഒരു മെലിഗ്നന്റ് കാൻസറസ് ഗ്രോത്ത് മാതിരി എന്നിട്ട് ആൾക്കാരുടെ മനസ്സ് മാറ്റിയെടുക്കാനാണ് അവർ ശ്രമിക്കുന്നത് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് അമേരിക്കൻ സഹായം വേണം എന്ന് വര എന്ന് ആൾക്കാർ വിശ്വസിക്കുന്ന രീതിയിൽ നിക്കരാഗുവയിൽ അങ്ങനെയായിരുന്നു അവർ ചെയ്തത് നിക്കരാഗുവൻ പോളിറ്റിക്സിനെ അവര് അടിമുടി എന്താ അറ്റാക്ക് മാറ്റി അമേരിക്കൻസ് വീണ്ടും ഇനി ഈ ഒരു ഭാഗത്ത് വി ആർ മെയിൻലി ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് ദി അമേരിക്കൻ പ്രസിഡൻസ് ഇൻ ഇറാഖ് സദ്ദാം ഹുസൈനെ പോലെയുള്ള ഒരു വ്യക്തി ഇറാഖിൽ ഇറാഖിൽ മാത്രമല്ല ലോകത്തിൽ മുഴുവൻ നാശമേ വിതയ്ക്കുള്ളൂ ഹി ഹാസ് വെപ്പൺസ് ഓഫ് മാസ് ഡിസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ഈ ലോകത്തെ മുഴുവൻ പിന്നെ നശിപ്പിക്കാൻ കഴിവുള്ള വെപ്പൺസ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ കയ്യിലുണ്ട് സോ ലോകത്തിന് വേണ്ടി വി ഹാവ് ടു സപ്രസ് ഹിം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടായിരുന്നു അവരുടെ അറ്റാക്ക് മുഴുവൻ ഇറാഖിന്റെ മേല് ആൻഡ് എത്രത്തോളം ഇൻ ദിസ് ഡിപ്പാർട്ട് വി ഹി ടേക്ക് ഗിവ്സ് എസ് എ ഗ്രാഫിക് അക്കൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് ദ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ഡിസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ ഇറാഖ് മുഴുവൻ നശിച്ചു പോയി പക്ഷെ ഇവർ വീണ്ടും വീണ്ടും പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് നിന്നു ഞങ്ങളിത് ലോകത്തിന് വേണ്ടിയാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ആൻഡ് മെനി പീപ്പിൾ ആക്ച്വലി ബിലീവ്ഡ് ദം ഓൾസോ ആൻഡ് ഇത് ഇറാഖിൽ മാത്രമല്ല ലോകത്തിൽ പല സ്ഥലത്തും ഇത് പോലെ പല രാജ്യങ്ങളിലും ഇവർ ഇത് ചെയ്തു ഇവരോട് ആരെങ്കിലും ആർക്കും ധൈര്യമില്ല ലോകത്തിലെ ലോക മാധ്യമങ്ങൾക്ക് ധൈര്യമില്ല ഈ അമേരിക്ക ചെയ്യുന്നത് മുഴുവൻ കുറ്റമാണ് എന്ന് പറയാനായിട്ട് ബിക്കോസ് അമേരിക്കയുടെ എനിമി ആയി കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അതിന്റെ അതിന് വലിയ വില കൊടുക്കേണ്ടി വരും ലൈക് യു നോ ബഡി വോണ്ട്സ് ടു ബി ഇൻ ദ ബാഡ് ബുക്സ് ഓഫ് അമേരിക്ക അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ബ്രിട്ടനെ പോലെയുള്ള ഒരു രാജ്യം പണ്ട് ഏറ്റവും പവർഫുൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള രാജ്യമായിരുന്നു ഇന്ന് അത് ഒട്ടും പവർഫുൾ അല്ല ഇന്ന് അത് ഒരു ടോയ് ഡോഗിനെ പോലെയാണ് പപ്പറ്റ് ഈ അമേരിക്കയുടെ കയ്യിൽ ഒരു പപ്പറ്റിനെ പോലെ അമേരിക്ക എന്ത് പറയുന്നു അത് തന്നെ ഈ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ബ്രിട്ടൻ ഈ ഹാരൽ പിൻറ്റിൻ്റെ രാജ്യമാണ് ഹി ഈസ് എ ബ്രിട്ടീഷ് പ്ലേ റൈറ്റ് അപ്പൊ അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് അയാളെ ബ്രിട്ടന്റെ കാര്യം എടുത്ത് പറയുന്നത് ടോണി ബ്ലെയർ ആയിരുന്നു അന്ന് പ്രസിഡന്റ് ടോണി ബ്ലെയർ അമേരിക്കൻ പ്രസിഡന്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള 
ജോർജ് ബുഷിന്റെ കയ്യിൽ ഒരു പാവ മാത്രമാണ് അതെങ്ങനെ വലിക്കുന്നോ അതുമാതിരി ഇയാൾ നീങ്ങുന്നു സോ ഇറാഖിൽ എന്ത് നടന്നു അതിനൊക്കെ ഈ ടോണി ബ്ലെയറും ഗ്രേറ്റ് ബ്രിട്ടനും സപ്രസ് ചെയ്തു ഈ സെക്ഷനിൽ ഒരു പ്രത്യേകം എടുത്തു പറയുന്ന ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് ഗൊണ്ടാനമോ ബേ പ്രിസൺ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞത് അത് ചിലി എന്ന രാജ്യത്തിൽ അമേരിക്ക നട എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു പ്രിസൺ ആണ് യുദ്ധത്തിലുള്ള പ്രിസണേഴ്സിനെ അവിടെ കൊണ്ട് ഇടുന്നു ആൻഡ് വളരെ ഹീനമായിട്ടുള്ള രീതിയിലാണ് അവരവിടെ ഈ പ്രിസണേഴ്സ് അവിടെ ജീവിക്കുന്നത് പക്ഷെ അതിനെ കുറിച്ച് ആരും വീണ്ടും എടുത്തു പറയാറില്ല അത് ആരും ഒരു ലോക മാധ്യമങ്ങളും അതിന് ചോദ്യം ചെയ്യുന്നില്ല എവിടെയെങ്കിലും ഒരു പത്രത്തിന്റെ സിക്സ് പേജിൽ ഒരു ചെറിയ ന്യൂസ് ആയിട്ട് മാത്രം എന്തെങ്കിലും അതിനെ കുറിച്ചുണ്ടാവും ഒരിക്കലും ഒരു ഫ്രണ്ട് പേജ് അറ്റൻഷൻ അതിന് കിട്ടുന്നില്ല ആർക്കും ധൈര്യമില്ല അതിനെ കുറിച്ച് ചോദിക്കാൻ ബ്രിട്ടന്റെ അവരുടെ പ്രിസണേഴ്സ് പോലും ഉണ്ട് പക്ഷെ അവരും അതിനെ കുറിച്ച് പറയുന്നില്ല അപ്പൊ ഇങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഈ അമേരിക്ക ഇങ്ങനെ സത്യത്തെ വളച്ചൊടിച്ച് എല്ലാവരെയും ഒരു സൈലൻസിലേക്ക് ആക്കുന്നു ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ദ ഹോൾ സെക്ഷൻ ഇസ് അബൌട്ട് ആൻഡ് ഫൈനലി ഇയാൾ ഒരു ജോർജ് ബുഷിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് ഒരു തമാശ രൂപത്തിൽ പറയാണ് ജോർജ് ബുഷിന് കുറെ അധികം സ്പീച്ച് റൈറ്റേഴ്സ് ഉണ്ട് ഞാൻ ഇനി ഒരു സ്പീച്ച് എഴുതി കൊടുക്കട്ടെ ഇയാള് ജോർജ് ബുഷ് മീഡിയയുടെ മുന്നിൽ വന്ന് സംസാരിക്കുവാണെങ്കിൽ ഇങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ ആയിരിക്കും പറയുന്നത് എന്തിനാ ഒരു സ്പീച്ച് ഒരു ഹ്യൂമറസ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സ്പീച്ച് ആണ് പറയുന്നത് ഞാൻ നല്ല ശാന്തിയുടെ ദൂതനാണ് ആൻഡ് ഞാൻ ലോകത്തിൽ ചെയ്യുന്നത് മുഴുവൻ ലോക നന്മയ്ക്ക് വേണ്ടിയാണ് സദാം ഹുസൈനെ പോലെയുള്ള ഒരാള് ഒരു ബാർബേറിനാണ് അയാൾ മറ്റുള്ളവരെ കൊല്ലുന്നു അയാളുടെ ദൈവം വേറെയാണ് അയാളുടെ ജീവം മോശ ദൈവം മോശം ദൈവമാണ് എന്റെ ദൈവം ആണ് നമ്മളുടെ ലോക ദൈവം ആ ദൈവം നല്ലൊരു ദൈവമാണ് ഇങ്ങനെ പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് ലൈക്ക് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ വെരി റിഡിക്യുലസ് സ്പീച്ച് പക്ഷെ അതാണ് അതിന്റെ പോയിന്റ് ഈ ഹാരൽ പിൻറ്റർ വ്യങ്കിയ വ്യങ്കിയ രൂപത്തിൽ കള്ള കളിയാക്കിക്കൊണ്ട് എഴുതിയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സ്പീച്ച് ആണ് ഫൈനലി ഈ എസ് എ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഈ സ്പീച്ച് അവസാനിക്കുന്നത് ഈ ഒരു പോയിന്റിൽ വെച്ചിട്ടാണ് അതായത് ഈ ലോകത്തിൽ ഇന്ന് വേർ ട്രൂത്ത് ഹാസ് ബിൻ സൈഡ് ലൈൻ നമ്മൾ ഡോക്ടർ പ്രശാന്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞ ക്ലാസ് നിങ്ങളോട് പോസ്റ്റ് ട്രൂത്തിനെ കുറിച്ചൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞു സത്യം എന്നൊരു കാര്യത്തിന് ഇന്ന് വില ഇല്ലാത്ത കാര്യമാണ് എല്ലാവരും ധരിപ്പിക്കുകയാണ് ഇതാണ് സത്യം എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു അവര് പറയുന്നത് നമ്മൾ വിശ്വസിച്ചു പോവുകയാണ് അവര് ദ വേ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ബീ കൺവേ പക്ഷെ ഇയാൾ പറയുന്നത് ഒരു എഴുത്തുകാരന് ഒരിക്കലും അങ്ങനെ ഐ മീൻ എഴുത്തുകാരന് ഒരു പവർ ഉണ്ട് സത്യം തുറന്നു കാണിക്കാൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ സത്യം എവിടെയൊക്കെ മൂടപ്പെടുന്നുവോ അത് പോയിന്റ് ഔട്ട് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള കഴിവ് എഴുത്തുകാരന് മാത്രമാണ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൺലി ത്രൂ ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ദാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് പോയിന്റിംഗ് ഔട്ട് ക്യാൻ ഹാപ്പൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ഒരു റൈറ്ററിന് മാത്രമേ അതിനുള്ളൊരു കഴിവുള്ളൂ ആ എഴുത്തിന്റെ ഒരു പ്രാധാന്യത്തെ കുറിച്ചാണ് അദ്ദേഹം പറയുന്നത് എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു നന്മ ലോകത്തിൽ ബാക്കിയുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അത് എഴുത്തിലൂടെ ആയിരിക്കും പുറത്ത് വരുന്നത് ദ ക്യാൻ പ്രൊട്ടക്ട് ദ കോൺഷ്യൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ വേൾഡ് അതായത് ഒരു എഴുത്തുകാരൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എഴുത്തുകാരി അത് എടുത്തു കാണിച്ചാൽ ഒരു സത്യം തുറന്നു പറഞ്ഞാൽ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദി ഓൺലി വേ ഇൻ വിച്ച് ലോകത്തിന്റെ മനസാക്ഷിയെ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ കോൺഷ്യൻസിനെ പ്രൊട്ടക്ട് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള സത്യത്തിന് ഇനി അത് മാത്രമേ ഒരു വഴിയുള്ളൂ സോ ദ റൈറ്റേഴ്സ് ഷുഡ് കീപ്പ് റൈറ്റിംഗ് ആൻഡ് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് ദ ട്രൂത്ത് ഫോർ ദ സേക്ക് ഓഫ് ദ വേൾഡ് അവരുടെ വർക്ക് ഓഫ് ആർട്ടിൽ പ്രോബബ്ലി അവരത് സത്യത്തെ വേറെ രീതിയിലായിരിക്കും അവതരിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് പക്ഷേ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൺലി ത്രൂ റൈറ്റിംഗ്സ് ദാറ്റ് എ റൈറ്റർ ദ വേൾഡ് ക്യാൻ ബി പ്രൊട്ടക്റ്റഡ് അപ്പൊ ആ ഒരു എഴുത്ത് എഴുത്തുകാരുടെ ഒരു പ്രാധാന്യത്തെ കുറിച്ച് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടാണ് ഈ സ്പീച്ച് എൻഡ് ചെയ്തത് നൗ യു ക്യാൻ ലിസൺ ടു ദ ടോക്ക് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ വെരി ലോങ് വൺ ട്വന്റി ഫോർട്ടി സെവൻ മിനിറ്റ്സ് ഓളം ഉണ്ട് പ്ലീസ് സീ ദ സ്ലൈഡ്സ് ഓൾസോ കുറച്ചും കൂടെ ക്ലിയർ ആയിട്ട് അത് മനസ്സിലാവും ഇനി ഞാൻ ക്ലാസ് കഴിയുമ്പോൾ നിങ്ങളുടെ കൂടെ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യും over to you dr prashant uh, oh dr premanand you can continue believe that whatever it was doing was for the good of humanity it also highlighted the crimes committed by other nations by russia by germany through its stories through the films that it made the united states made sure that everyone knew about the crimes committed by the other nations but
empowered itself to being the number one nation and that is what you see in this uh, in the two images on this slide the way in which the united states has got control over the entire world without being questioned by anyone so that was how the previous part ended with a sentence the united states actions throughout the world made it clear that it had concluded it had cut blanc to do what it liked cut blanche is a french word which means a plain uh, paper or a, a white card cut card or paper It states has got points out the very clever man. It made it clear that it had concluded it had cut blanche to do what it liked. Cut blanche is a French word which means a plain uh, paper or a, a white card. Cut is card or paper and blanche is plain or white. In other words, it's like having absolute freedom. Like, uh, it, it has absolute freedom to do whatever it wants. It gives itself that freedom and nobody dares to question it. Pinter then points out the very clever manner in which America invaded other countries. It always avoided direct conflict or direct confrontation, direct invasion, because that would be noticed and it would be criticized. On the other hand, America entered um, those countries in a sly manner and uh, it described its presence as low intensity uh, conflict. It, it means that it's not like dropping a bomb in the country and then uh, attacking the country. On the other hand, it would uh, go right into the heart of the country and establish itself and then its presence would uh, be asserted. Other or a cancerous growth, Madriana Pinter described in He says, You establish a malignant growth and watch the gangrene bloom. Or a gangrene or ugly bodily manifestation, Madri, your presence, the American presence grows in that country. Ultimately, uh, the United States would have controlled the entire population and uh, established a rule by either the military or some of the great um, uh, econo the corporations. Uh, so it would ensure that it was either a military or a capitalist government that was installed in those countries by ousting the uh, democratically elected governments, um, most of whom were, of course, uh, socialists. So Logat Pala Rajitum, America Chaydadidana, it would train the military or train the corporate uh, um, sector to protest against the governments, the established governments. And uh, ultimately, when all that had been done, when the people of the country would be made to believe that this is the best that can happen to us, America has come to protect us. In the Ulla, our conviction America would go about, uh, you know, it would face the camera, it would face the uh, press and say, we have saved democracy. So this is the U.S. foreign policy. This has been the U.S. foreign policy and that is what Pinter attacks. He gives us the specific example of Nicaragua to prove this. In the first part of the speech, Pinter had, of course, spoken about Iraq and conveyed how the United States created a huge lie about the danger that Saddam Hussein was and the way in which he would unleash terror upon the world with his weapons of mass destruction. It was by making people believe this lie that they plundered Iraq for their own interests, of course. But everyone believed that lie and Iraq was devastated. Now, Pinter talks specifically about another country, Nicaragua, a Central American uh, nation, as you can see, situated between North America and South America, and also between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. 
Now, Nicaragua was very uh, much what was of great interest to America because they had uh, you know, plans to construct a bridge that connect that would connect the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. And Nicaragua seemed the ideal um, country through which or over which they could construct such a bridge. For this and for various other reasons, they uh, considered Nicaragua as a, as a hot spot. Now, we'll just take a quick look at the history of Nicaragua to understand the US presence in Nicaragua in a more, in a clearer manner. Now, Nicaragua was a country that was colonized both by Spain and uh, the United Kingdom or England. And it was only towards the end of the 19th century that the country began to build itself as an independent nation. And in this, they received considerable support from the United States. And uh, from about the year 1909 or around that time, uh, the U U United States was a dominant presence in uh, Nicaragua. There were many Nicaraguans who hated the American presence in their country and resisted the control of America over Nicaragua. And chief among them was a leader named Cesar Augusto Sandino. Now, he led many movements against the conservative governments in Nicaragua, which were supported by the Americans. And it was in 1927 that he succeeded in driving the American soldiers out of Nicaragua. And he became the leader of the country. Now, he was a powerful leader and an extremely popular person, uh, leader, very much like a Che Guevara in Nicaragua, and who also had a very strong leftist leading. Now, for all these reasons, America just hated this person and they were looking for the earliest opportunity to overthrow him. And they kept um, uh, training, you know, people, conservative uh, establishments to rebel against Sandino. And uh, they succeeded. Uh, by the 1930s, they got um, Sandino assassinated and they installed the Somoza family, the family of Anastasio Somoza Garcia as the new leaders of Nicaragua. And this family continued to rule Nicaragua for many years uh, till late into the 1970s and in a most dictatorial manner. Naturally, there were many uprisings against this uh, family you know, the family was strongly supported by the, United, uh, by the United States because uh, with this family in power, America could achieve whatever it wanted in Nicaragua. And uh, they, um, one of the leaders who kept rebelling against this family was uh, Shamoro, Pedro Joaquin Shamoro, who was the, a follower of uh, Sandino and uh, he was known as a Sandinista. So this um, leader was assassinated. Again, there was a strong American hand behind the assassination of this person. And um, then you have uh, many uh, groups, rebel groups in Nicaragua coming together and uh, they were uh, trying to oust uh, the family of the Somosas. And uh, it was in 1979 that uh, you have the ouster of Somoza. Then there was a, uh, an, an effort in the country to rebuild itself under the new leader, Daniel Ortega. Now, he was also uh, a left winger who was also a follower of, uh, you know, the Sandinista policy. And again, uh, since the United Nations could, United States, America could not tolerate this kind of a person in Nicaragua, they now trained a rebel group known as the 
contrasts. You know, the, they, they gave them arms, they gave them weapons, and they made the contrasts a very strong rebel group against the Sandinista uh, governments in Nicaragua. It was during the reign of the American president Ronald Reagan that the Contras received the maximum of support to create trouble in Nicaragua and they kept creating problems for the elected government of Daniel Ortega. And ultimately it was only with much pressure from other um, Central American countries that America decided to withdraw uh, the Contras and to disband the Contras. And um, it was in, in return for another election. And during the election, um, uh, Violeta Barrios de Chamorro, she, um, she, she led an anti-Sandinista coalition and she defeated Daniel Ortega. But by 2006, Daniel Ortega was back in uh, power and he now is the president of Nicaragua. Now, um, this brief look at the country's history can tell us about the way in which its uh, fortunes have been so much controlled by the Americans and they have made life hell for the people of Nicaragua. Let us now come back to the text. Pinta tells us about a uh, meeting that took place in London in the late 1980s. There was a delegation from Nicaragua of which um, Pinta was a member and the leader of that delegation was Father John Metcalf. There was an American delegation also. Now this meeting was taking place at a time when the Americans were thinking of sponsoring the Contras even more and the Nicaraguan delegation uh, came to London to uh, request the Americans to withdraw their support to the Contras because the Contras were re really plundering the nation and making life hell for the local people. So in that context, Father Metcalf said he addressed the American leader, Mr. Raymond Says, who was uh, you know, a very powerful man in America. And Father Metcalf requested Raymond Says, he said, Sir, I'm in charge of a parish in the north of Nicaragua. My parishioners built a school, a health center, a cultural center, and we've been living there in peace for a long time. But with the arrival of the Contra Force, we are in trouble. A few months ago, a Contra Force attacked the parish and they destroyed everything. The school, the health center, the culture center. They raped the nurses and the teachers and they slaughtered the doctors in the most brutal manner. They behaved like savages and Father Mitkoff made a very strong plea that the US government should withdraw its support to this terrorist group. Now Raymond says, listen to all this and in a very um, calm manner, he just said, Father, let me tell you something. In war, innocent people always suffer. Now this was a shocking reply. Nobody expected the American leader to respond in this insensitive manner, you know, as if it was no big deal at all. Yudhamana apokore innocent alkar marana pedum inna. I mean, it was a very insensitive remark that he made. The Nicaraguan delegation protested and they said that the innocent people here were the victims of a gruesome atrocity subsidized by the American government. And if the Contras allowed, if the Congress, uh, the American Congress allowed the Contras more money, then there would be further atrocities. Saints again listened to it and he remained unshaken. He said, I don't agree with the facts that you have presented here. He refused to accept that the delegation's views or report as truthful. They could only, the delegation, the Nicaraguan delegation could only withdraw in silence. They had been unable or unsuccessful in making the Americans withdraw their support to the Contras. And Pinter tells us how, as he was leaving the embassy, um, there was an American lead, American delegate who came up to him and, you know, very excitedly told him, I enjoy your place. 
Quinta says he just could not reply to that because you know what he wants to convey is that if at all anybody enjoyed the kind or appreciated Pinter's plays, naturally that person would give some respect to justice and therefore he just did not reply to that person. And this was, it was around the same time that uh, Reagan, you know, President Ronald Reagan was going about making statements like this. The contrasts are the moral equivalent of our founding fathers. Now, the founding fathers were the Europeans who established the United States of America. And they were inhabited by the native Indians. But then the, uh, the, Euro the Europeans came there and they invaded and they made the land their own. And the initial group of the leaders, the, the Europeans who settled down in America, they were known as the founding fathers. And they considered us a very uh, special group of people. And here was President Reagan who said that the contrasts in Nicaragua are very much like our founding fathers. Again, you know, something that no one could accept in their right senses. So this is what the United States did in Nicaragua or did to the people of Nicaragua. Now, Pinta says, you know, it wasn't as if the Sandinistas were perfect. You know, they had their own share of violence and arrogance and so on. But at least they, um, you know, they really did uh, do a lot of good in Nicaragua. They were rational, they were civilized, unlike the Contras. And they could establish, they wanted to establish a stable, decent, pluralistic society. You know, one which gave representation to every uh, ethnic group in Nicaragua. Uh, they abolished the death penalty. Then the uh, many, many peasants, you know, the very poor peasants were brought back uh, from the verge of total ruin. Many families were given uh, uh, titles to land so that they became landholders. And they built many schools. There was a big uh, campaign to um, improve literacy in Nicaragua. And um, free education was established. They gave a lot of um, impetus to uh, a free health service as a, res as a result of which infant mortality came down, polio was eradicated, and they, ultimately they did a lot of good, you know, the Sandinist government. But um, the United uh, States naturally uh, could not tolerate this leftist-leaning government, and they uh, saw to it that, the, that uh, you know, the Sandinist government was ousted by the Contras. And... What did they say as uh, at the end of it all? That they had succeeded in making democracy prevail. And, uh, you know, this uh, act of theirs, um, destroying the country and finally justifying whatever they had said, done by saying that they did everything to protect democracy. This was something that they followed, not just in Nicaragua, but in other parts of the world too. So Pinter says uh, the United States was responsible for almost every right-wing dictatorship in various parts of the world, in Greece, in Indonesia, Uruguay, the Philippines, Guatemala, Salvador, El Salvador, in all these countries, you can see the way American intervention made uh, you know, um, life terrible for the people. This map just indicates the... Um, interventions of America in different parts of the world. And in all these places, they succeeded in, um, in establishing a right-wing military uh, kind of dictatorship. And um, uh, what happened in Chile, says Pinter, in 1973, something that can never be forgiven. In Chile, uh, again, you have the popular leader, um, Sal, uh, Salvador Allende and because of his uh, socialist leanings he was something somebody that the Americans just could not tolerate in a country that again they had set their sights on so they uh, gave a lot of support to a leader named Augusto Pinochet 
Now, Pinochet was a brutal dictator, somebody who can be compared to Hitler uh, in Germany or Pol Pot, Cambodia, Lula, Pol Pot, Nepal. And, uh, you know, this was the kind of dictator that America sponsored and supported. You know, he, they made them grow roots in Chile and the country faced a terrible uh, period under the mil military dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Pinter says thousands lost their lives in these uh, countries, but no one speaks about that because the truth has been very successfully erased by the Americans. It is as a result, uh, as a result of which it is as if nothing has ever happened. Even while it was happening, we didn't know that it was happening or it was conveyed as if it didn't matter. So the crimes of the United States have been systematic, constant, vicious and remorseless, you know, the cruelest crimes possible. But very few people actually talk about the crimes committed by America. And that is why he, Pinter says you have to hand it to America. They have been so clever and successful in the way they have manipulated you know, themselves into power worldwide. And they masquerade, you know, they put on an act as if they are doing it for universal goodness. It is a brilliant, even witty, highly successful act of hypnosis. You know, the whole world is hypnotized into believing that the American atrocities are for the good of the world. In this kind of situation where America has the freedom to do whatever it wants and is hardly criticized by anyone else, Pinter believes that we have lost our moral sensibility. We do not anymore have a conscience. Because if we did have a conscience, we would simply not let America do all that it has been doing in different parts of the world. We would particularly not allow America to have a prison named the Guantanamo Bay in Cuba a prison that houses or imprisons where, uh, where um, imprisons war criminals you know who end up in prison without even getting a fair trial so you know this kind of uh, inhuman practice where the prisoners are housed without allowing them a free trial and where they are treated in the most brutal most inhuman manner possible the fact that uh, this is going on is a total flouting of international conventions like the Geneva Convention, you know, which has set down specific rules with regard to international relations. But it is as if America is above all these rules. America is very naive. The rest of the world cannot even protest against that. So the prison, the Guantanamo Bay, is a proof of that kind of power that the United States has. And what about the media? Does it ever highlight the, uh, the, the inhumanity of Guantanamo Bay? Hardly ever. Even if something is written about it in the newspapers, it would be some small item in maybe page 6 or 7 or never would it be given front page importance and uh, when the at the time that the speech was made by Pinter he says that there were many in the prison uh, including uh, you know British residents and uh, some of them went on a hunger strike these prisoners in Guantanamo Bay went on a hunger strike in protest against the American atrocities now, what about that? They are being force fed. They are, um, you know, they, they are being treated in the most brutal manner. But uh, there is no word uttered against it, even by 
the British Foreign Secretary or the British Prime Minister. You have British prisoners there, but even the authorities in Britain are silent about it. Why? Because the United States has that kind of control over Britain. Pinter believes that Britain, you know, his own country, Britain, is just a puppet in the hands of the United States. And that is what is depicted in that cartoon where you have the, pre the president, George Bush, playing with strings and thereby controlling the British Prime Minister, Tony Blair. And the Americans will never tolerate any kind of resistance, any kind of complaint against them. Because um, they, they you know they, they have made the whole world believe that if their conduct in Guantanamo Bay is criticized, that is an unfriendly act. So nobody wants to be in the bad books of the United States. Nobody wants uh, sanctions to be imposed against them by the United States. Therefore, everyone tries to be in the good books of America. Tony Blair shuts up. No one protests against whatever America has been doing. Pinter now comes back to the case of Iraq and says how the American attack on Iraq was just like a bandit act. It was just like an act of state uh, terrorism. And there was absolutely no respect for international law when America attacked Iraq. And it was um, conveyed through a series of lies and uh, a kind of manipulation of the media, as a result of which the public was made to believe that um, the, the kind of um, military and economic control that America had over the Middle East was uh, a kind of liberation. Uh, it, it, it was something that would liberate the people of Iraq and also save the rest of the world. Pinter says that it was just a big lie. And um, as a result of the, uh, the, the terrible uh, military force that was unleashed in Iraq by America, you had the uh, unfortunate death of countless Iraqis, innocent people. And beyond the death, there were also, uh, beyond the deaths, there were so many who were very badly wounded. They were mutilated, you know, their bodies were wounded in the worst possible manner. The thousands of innocents who lost their lives and their bearings. And um, all of this, you know, ultimately when Saddam Hussein uh, was, the reign of Saddam Hussein was finished, the Americans celebrated it. You know, they turned a blind eye to all the destruction that they had uh, brought into Iraq. Look at the pictures there. Our destruction of Numnoka, they, they just celebrated this victory and they trumpeted it aloud as a return to freedom and democracy in the Middle East. So America has been nothing less than a mass murderer in various parts of the world, but nobody accuses them of being mass murderers. And therefore Pinta asks, Any pera kollanam, how many more people do you have to kill in order to be uh, branded as a war criminal? And he, he says, uh, no, nobody, it's as if the International Criminal Court of Justice does not have any power at all. It does not because America is not a member of that uh, convention, you know, the, whereby the International Cro Criminal Court of Justice functions. It has very cleverly not been, become a part of that agreement. They have not ratified the International Criminal Court of Justice. So whatever happens, you know, America would never be um, held responsible. They would never have to face a trial. They would never have to be um, uh, answerable for any destruction, any act of destruction in any part of the world. Brit Britain, however, is a member of that uh, convention. It is a part of the International Criminal Court of Justice. So 
for all that uh, Britain does in partnership with America. You know, whatever America did in countries like Iraq, they had the firm support of Britain in, in, in those acts. So, uh, Pinter says that, you know, a country like Britain, which is a part of the International Criminal Court of Justice, will have to face prosecution. And in a humorous way, he says, we can give the address of the person who's responsible for this. That person lives in number 10 Downing Street, London. That is, of course, the official residence of the British Prime Minister. Now, uh, the situation is that uh, there is so much of calamity that has um, happened in uh, Iraq as a result of the American intervention. So many, many, many deaths. But it is as if death is irrelevant here. They do not even talk about it. Neither Bush nor Blair even acknowledge the fact that so many people have died. They put it on the back burner. They don't give it any attention at all. At least 100,000 Iraqis were killed by American bombs and missiles before the operation in Iraq. These people are of no moment at all. It is as if their deaths don't even exist. When uh, you know, the, the American response to the death of the innocents was captured so well in a remark that was made by the American general Tommy Franks. He was a commander of the American army in Iraq and somebody asked him about the number of people who had lost their lives and he just said, we don't do body counts. You know, a most insensitive remark. We don't do body counts. A very shocking statement made by the American leader. Pinter now specifically attacks Tony Blair, the British Prime Minister, for his involvement in the war in Iraq. He invites our attention to a photograph that had appeared in some British newspapers which showed Tony Blair, a very handsome and smiling Tony Blair, kissing a little Iraqi boy. This was taken during one of his visits to Iraq and um, he had visited schools, you know, because it was in schools that they could meet young youngsters, you know, the younger generation, whom they could convince that what they were doing was a good, noble act, that the war was for the good of the Iraqis. So it was in that context that he went to the school, he was welcomed with flowers, and then he very um, you know, generously lifted a little uh, Iraqi boy and kissed him on his cheek. And you know, this was a good pub PR work for the British Prime Minister. But around the same time, there were other boys who met with a different kind of end. There were many young boys who, young children who died. There were many young children who were mutilated, you know, who were injured by the bomb blast and who had lost their limbs. They were, uh, you know, facing hell in hospitals. No newspaper ever carry, carried a photograph of Blair uh, kissing or showing any kind of concern at all for such people. A grateful child in the Varna uh, kissed in the photo, the newspapers very happily published, but not that of the severely wounded children. It, uh, you know, it is as if they did not want to acknowledge the fact that so many were dying and so many were being wounded because other Paranyal our day role clear out. And in a very metaphoric manner, Pinter says, who likes to have blood on your shirt? Blood is dirty. It dirties your shirt and tie when you're making a sincere speech on television. On television, you want to appear as an angel, you know, dressed in spotless white. You have a perfect image. Our image is Therefore, Tony Blair, George Bush and others just ignored the ones who were 
injured and the ones who died even in their own armies you know they uh, did not acknowledge the death of even the american soldiers they were just the bodies of these soldiers who died during the war were simply transported to some graves and nobody got to know about it because they did not want the world to know that they had lost their own soldiers the funerals were conducted in a secretive manner and nobody ever talked about any of those people who died the dead and the mutilated simply rot away in different kinds of graves and even after the war in iraq ended did the united states give up not at all it just spread its military presence to other areas all over the world and to strengthen itself it just keeps piling up weapons more and more weapons uh, the biggest uh, budgetary allocation in the united states is for defense and uh, great britain is also not far behind they have also been piling up weapons one after the other and becoming nuclear superpowers you know they have the united states has developed a new system of nuclear force known as bunker busters very powerful uh, bombs which can destroy whole uh, bunkers of the enemy territories and um, pinter as who are they aiming at are they aiming at you know america and britain together are they aiming at osama bin laden uh, it could be osama bin laden today it could be you and me tomorrow or it could even be joe dox you know joe dox is an imaginary character america would even do that or imaginary enemy undakita we are doing this to protect democracy in the parium and the whole world will believe that or are they heading uh, towards china or paris what is their who is their target who knows what we do know is that this infantile insanity you know it's like a madness that has gripped america uh, like a little child who wants to uh, collect as many toys as possible the united states wa states wants to possess as many number of nuclear weapons as possible and that is the at the heart of the american political philosophy at the moment says pinter we must remind ourselves that the united states is on a permanent military footing and shows no sign of relaxing it yuddham yuddham ennadana america's priority it just wants to control the rest of the world and be the superpower with its military might pinter says that many americans have had enough they've just had enough of war and they want these military exercises of the united states to end but they have not been able to voice it loudly enough rede shabda marum ke kelkunnilla even the ones who want the wars to end you know they cannot be heard um, well and therefore this is um, not likely to end at all america will just continue to attack other nations and be the military superpower that it is and at this point he makes a kind of a humorous remark he says uh, you know president bush who seen in the photograph there george bush he has many good speech writers but for a change let me volunteer nan or a speech ang or kezhuthi kodukam and this is what he would like to say and pinter um makes up an imaginary speech which he says uh, is you know the kind of thing that george bush would say and idairikum a speech he says god is good god is great god is good my god bin laden's good god is bad his is a bad god saddam's god was bad except he didn't have one he was a barbarian we are not barbarians we don't chop other people's heads off we believe in freedom you know it's just like nonsense you keep saying uh, the same thing over and over again and you are convinced that you are good and everyone else is bad ende devam nallada mattullavarude devam mosham ende religion nallada mattullavarude religion mosham he says we don't chop people's heads off you know the they kept saying that the 
ഇറാഖീസ് യു നോ പീപ്പിൾ ലൈക് സദ്ദാം ഹുസൈൻ ആർ ബാബേറിയൻസ് അവർ മറ്റുള്ളവരുടെ തല വെട്ടും യുണൈറ്റഡ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ്സ് വേറെ രീതിയിൽ തല വെട്ടുന്നതിനെ കുറിച്ച് ദ വുഡ് നെവർ സേ സ്പീക്ക് അബൌട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ഹി സെസ് വി ബിലീവ് ഇൻ ഫ്രീഡം ആൻഡ് ഗോഡ് ഓൾസോ ബിലീവ്സ് ഇൻ ഫ്രീഡം അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞങ്ങളും ദൈവവും തുല്യമാണ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് they take i am not a barbarian i am the democratically elected leader of a freedom loving democracy you know they talk so much about freedom they talk so much about democracy but ide freedom um ide democracy um vera rajyangalil avaru sammadikkilla they do not let other countries enjoy their freedom and their democracy he says we are a compassionate society nammal valare dayashilaraanu we give compassionate electrocution and compassionate lethal inject injection it's a very um, you know sarcastic statement he says njangal valare dayashilaraayittaanu electrocution and um, lethal injection vera aalkare kollunnathu we are doing that out of kindness we are a great nation i am not a dictator you know this sounds exactly like the kind of speech that a hitler would have made remember the speech made by charlie chaplin in the great dictator adey pole ullo or speech and he says i am not a dictator he is saddam hussein is a dictator i am not a barbarian he is and he is they all are i possess moral authority he believes that he has the authority to do whatever he wants to do you see this fist mushti churi chutti he folds his fist and says this is my moral authority and don't you forget it you know he gives himself the moral authority to attack others we now come to the last part of the speech where pinter speaks about the very important role that a writer can play in the world today Uh, the role that a writer can play to protest against the atrocities like the ones being unleashed by the united states of america he says uh, you know the the writer lives in a very precarious position a writer's life is highly vulnerable you know the writer is exposed to so much of danger because in the ediyalum adine question cheyan there are people waiting out there if you criticize the government the government will target you and silence you so it's like a naked activity you're so exposed nammle or a bomb varshathine munnil poi nikkuna pole and it's like a naked activity you don't have to weep about that the writer makes his choice but uh, even if it is a very dangerous activity he says there is nothing to weep about that Uh, it, it, because it's a choice that the writer makes yan epradigarikum yan eludum i will speak against inhumanity in the uh, it is a choice that the writer makes it is true to say that you open to all the winds some of them extremely icy you will be you know in a very very difficult situation you may be on your own out on a limb there is no protection there is no shelter shelter and protection will come only when you lie adayad satyam thorannu pariyada if you support the ones the criminals you will get a lot of free uh, protection you will get a lot of shelter but in which case of course you have constructed your own protection and it could be argued you become a politician but the moment you utter lies and support the uh, cruel people then you yourself become one among them politician state cheyna politician na ningal enna support cheyno that moment you become a politician yourself so the difference between a writer and a politician a writer is brave and stands for the truth the politician stands for falsehood and pinter believes that in spite of all the adversities in spite of all the disadvantages and the dangers uh, that um, writers face fierce intellectual determination to define the real truth of our lives is 
a crucial obligation which devolves upon us all. It is a responsibility, he says, of the writers to hold up the truth. Satyatina Vendi Nelabad Edukuga fight for the truth and convey the truth to the people. That is the greatest moral responsibility of writers. He says it is mandatory. It is a compulsory thing. Idil Nina Namalka Urinya Mara and Patilla. So we need to stand for the truth and convey the truth to the people. And if we do not have that kind of determination in a political vision, then we can never hope to restore that which we are nearly losing. That is the dignity of man. Human beings in dignity, you know, that is something that can be protected and it can be protected best by the writers. They are the ones who can most effectively question any kind of inhuman act. Wherever there is injustice, a writer can speak against it. And it is by speaking against injustice that a writer can protect the dignity of humanity. So the uh, lesson is over. Yes. So we can uh, have a discussion about this. And uh, let me just see whether Bindu. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, thank you, Bindu. It was a wonderful explanation. Uh -huh. Very long one. Yeah, uh, but yeah. lesson well done. In fact, in fact, our text still had to be done. It was very tough. It was very tough. It was very tough. It was very tough. Uh -huh. I hope the video listening on the Anyway, now that you're members of this class, uh, this group, you will definitely have access to it. That's why the Cholo and then the and please ask her. We have a Pinter expert in uh, Dr. Prashant here. He will also <laughs> help us with the uh, lesson. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now I'll just stop the recording. Yeah.